There is so much going on with Arizona softball. Obviously, Mike Candrea stepping aside. The girls uh, heading to Oklahoma City once again. And really great to have on a true legend of the program, four-time NCAA All-American and national champion uh, pitcher in 2006, Alicia Hollowell, who, when Shane and I were in school, was a complete force. I mean, she was the best pitcher in college softball. I think, I think it's not uh, unfair to say that. Alicia, thank you for joining Shane and I here on Wildcat Country. First of all, your thoughts on Mike Candrea stepping aside. Are you surprised? And when you first found out the news, what went through your mind? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, you know, no, I'm not surprised. Um, I think this has been kind of a long time coming for him, especially since he, Michelle, his daughter had, um, you know, her kids. And so he has grandkids and just spending time with his family, you know, is important to him and being able to have that opportunity. I think, you know, it's been a long time coming. I think it was just a matter of him, you know, getting all his ducks in a row and figuring out who's going to take over for him. Uh, Alicia, first of all, I'm actually surprised that, that my uh, co-host, uh, Eric, he usually likes to, to overstate people's accomplishments. I actually think he understated it in your case, because I, I think it's fair to say in a university with some of the best pitchers ever to play the game, you were the best statistically. So I'm just going to throw that out there. But uh, I'm moving on, uh, we, you know, we had Taryn Moat, another great pitcher at Arizona, uh, on the mm -hmm. podcast last week. And she said that uh, Mike Andrea is really known for giving some great life lessons, in addition to being a pretty good softball coach. Is there anything you learn from him that's really stuck with you all these years? You know, I think it's just like the stability and just some him always being there, him always being, you know, a consistent, you know, you always knew what you're going to get when it came to him. Um, and so I think just having that like consistency and just knowing that to give people and let them, you know, get a consistent part of you that isn't going to change, not going to fluctuate, you know, no matter what, you know what you're going to get with him. And I think that's been a, a, a big thing I've learned from him. Well, let's take a step back and tell us about your decision to go play for Coach Candrea at Arizona originally. Do you remember that what that process was like? Can you give us any insight into how you made that decision? Yeah, so I was playing travel ball on a um, Southern California team. I was, I'm was, i from a small town in Northern California, and so I was traveling down on the weekends to play. And um, Laura Espinoza was coaching a travel ball team, and she came up to me after one of the games, and she was like, hey, you're really good. I just want you to know I told Coach Candrea about you and that – you know, you're the best pitcher in your class. And I was like, okay. And I, you know, it was me and my coach talking to Lauren. I walked away and my coach is like, do you know who Coach Candrea is? And at that time I had no idea, none at all. Um, I was just kind of going through the recruiting process. I was getting recruited, you know, by most of the, at that time, Pac-10 schools. Um, and so for me, Stanford was high on my list. Um, Berkeley was high on my list because it was really close to home. Um, UCLA just being another, you know, in California, you know, somewhat close to homeschool for me was on my list. Um, and really what I remember is, you know, Nancy Evans. Nancy Evans was the pitching coach at the time and she came to every single one of my games. Like, and she would get there and sit her chair right behind home plate and would be there before the game started. And no matter what, like I knew I was always gonna see Nancy Evans. Um, and so she was the one who really did a lot of like my recruiting you know coach was there i'll never forget when they came on my home visit and how after they left like my parents were just like, in awe like my mom had her socks knocked off because just everything that coach brought up everything that he talked about all the ways that you know they're gonna what they were gonna do for me um and it wasn't like he walked in and was like hey you're gonna be our starting pitcher he walked in and was like if you earn a spot you'll play and um, it was just a matter of, you know, here's what we have on campus. Here's, you know, the degrees that you're interested in that we have um, and just laying it all out there. Um, and my parents were really just in awe after the home visit. Yeah. And so, the one thing that a lot of people don't, sorry to, sorry to cut you off there, Alicia. One thing that people don't uh, necessarily remember, and I, it took me a second to remember it, is that you, you replaced Jenny Finch. Like she was there the year before you came in as a freshman. So it wasn't like you were stepping into small shoes right there. Yeah, no. Um, I always say I got really lucky with the timing when I came into school because Jenny graduated. So she was there as a fifth year, um, but Jenny Gladding transferred to Florida. And with that happening, it just kind of, and then 
I came in with Leslie Wolf um, and then Wendy Allen were the other two pitchers. And so it was really just an opportunity for me since Jenny Gladding transferred, there was no returning pitchers to just kind of get in there and I got the ball and was able to kind of rock and roll with it. So in the three years you were coached by Coach Candrea, you made the College World Series, obviously winning in your senior year. How did Mike mm -hmm. Candrea make you a better softball player? I think just the mental toughness, you know, knowing that, you know, he trusted me and he was going to give me the ball and I had to get out there and, and get the job done. And, and he allowed me to, you know, kind of do my thing. Um, and so I think just the fact that he, he gave me that freedom to, to be me and to go out there and, um, and just, but also at the same time, like being on a team, putting me in competitive situations at practice, you know, getting me prepared for those big games was really a lot of what I got out of, you know, my time with him. Let's talk about the new head coach of Arizona softball, someone you know very well. Uh, Caitlin Lowe was actually the Pac-10 uh, Newcomer of the Year in 2004, an award you won a year earlier. So obviously you two were teammates. I believe your coaching careers at Arizona overlapped a bit as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what should Wildcat fans know about Caitlin other than the fact that she was a fantastic softball player herself back in the day and is also a great coach? I think just – you know, she's going to do a lot of what Coach Canada did. She's going to be very consistent. She's going to, you know, be a good recruiter. She's really smart with the game. Um, and so I'm interested to see kind of the edge that she brings, you know, because nobody can be coach. Nobody can, you know, be exactly like him. But, and, but I think she'll bring a lot of a good new energy. Alicia, why is Caitlin the right person to take over for Mike Candrea at Arizona? I'm, you know, I think Coach just knows and I'm sure it's personality I'm sure it's the knowledge I'm sure it's just the passion and drive and you know what she can she can bring um and I'm sure there's so much more that you know coach knows that everyone else is going to find out you know as this journey begins for her when you think back to your time obviously the last game was winning a national championship what's your I mean I guess I would assume that's your fondest Smell cat, but kind of explain what it feels like when you take the ball in the last inning with a lead, knowing a national championship is three outs away. What's going through you at that point, and what do you still remember about it? You know, I think it was just the big thing for me was just the culmination of my four years and the confidence that I had, you know, going into that last inning, the last three outs, we were ahead by five runs, and just knowing like finally, like, this is it, like all the hard work, all the blood, sweat and tears, you know, everything I had come to Arizona to win a national championship. And now we were in this position to get it done. And, um, you know, and I played on some really, really good teams where I look back at like my freshman year and I'm like, oh, I wish I would have known my senior year or my freshman year when I knew my senior year. And just some of the things that the losses that we had in the World Series and the different things that, you know, you would have things you would have done differently, but to then finally get it all and it all come together senior year and win it was just a great, great feeling and a great way to go out. And it's still now when I watch the World Series and watch the teams, you know, that lose and the seniors that, you know, are just heartbroken. And it's like, man, like there's only one team that their seniors get to do that every year and win the last game. And I'm like, I was so lucky to be able to get that done that year and, you know, have teammates that, you know, came through and, you know, scored all the runs and backed me up defensively. And um, so it was just such a, an exciting feeling and the culmination of just all four years and wanting to get it done for coach. I think that's the big thing is, you know, I came to Arizona to win a national championship and to get it done for him, um, you know, was a big, big part. Alicia, I know you stepped away from coaching a few years ago. I know you're married with a couple of kiddos now. What are you up to these days? So I work part-time as a dental hygienist. Um, I have my two awesome kids that keep me really busy. Um, Ensley is going to be three in July and then Garrett just turned one. Um, and I think everything has worked out the way it's supposed to. You know, my biggest thing, my biggest drive was to become a mom and to have, you know, my family and to be able to give them the time that I wanted to. And so now being able to kind of split my time and work part-time as a dental hygienist, you know, be a full-time mom. Um, and then I also give some pitching lessons on the side and I have, you know, really, really awesome group of um, 
kids that I work with, you know, they range in age from, you know, 10 to 18 um, that are extremely talented, have really awesome families that, you know, back them up and, you know, do everything for them to provide the best softball experience that they can. And um, so being able to work with them and help them just become a little bit better is, you know, kind of my softball outlet that I have. My last question for you, sort of along those lines, I know you stepped away to uh, look for something a bit more in your words, normal and something not quite as time consuming. Mm -hmm. Say Caitlin gives you a call one of these days and that, and say, Hey, would you want to, you want to rejoin the staff? Is that something you consider or have you moved on for good from that? No, I've moved on from that for sure. Um, you know, like I said, everything works out the way that it's supposed to. And just the balance that my life has now is exactly what I want. And I love it. And I love, you know, my being with my kids as much as I am. And there's really nothing that could take me away from that. <laughs> Well, and, and we can't blame you. I mean, that you, you're living the good life, and you had you've had a chance to do it all in the sport of softball, which is which is amazing. My last question for you is: even with Mike Candrea gone, give us let's say recruits are listening to this podcast right now. Give a sales pitch as to why playing at Arizona is the right move for them. You know, just the tradition at Arizona is never going to die. So, it, coach, all he's doing is passing the torch, um, and just with the alumni that are there, the coaching staff that's there, the team that's there now, like it's just gonna continue to, the faucet is just flowing um, and it's not gonna stop. So um, there's no better time to, to join the ranks be, with the new energy that is you know coming through. And I think it's just an exciting place for you know kids to play and to grow up in Tucson and to have you know everything that's given them at the University of Arizona there's like no better place to get your degree and play softball and play in front of the incredible fans so you're only missing out if you don't go to U of A. I think Shane was right when he said earlier I, that I understated your accomplishments as a four-time All-American a national champion and one of the greatest pitchers in Arizona history I don't know how you can understand that did. Alicia, it was great to have you on and congratulations on all of your success on the field back in the day and obviously off the field now. You're doing great and we're really glad to have you on and hope to have you on again down the road.